If you're interested in supporting the channel, there are two things you can do. Flipside Gaming is offering a 10% discount for any order $10 or more if you use the promo code VOIDMAGE on their website. That is VOIDMAGE in all caps. I will also have an affiliate link to TCGplayer.com. If you use that link, any purchase you make on that website will go towards supporting the channel. I appreciate the support. Also, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss any videos. Hello everyone, welcome back to another Commander Deck Tech video. I'm sure as you've noticed by now the intro has changed. I am now affiliated with TCGplayer.com, which means that I do have an affiliate link where you can go buy stuff and support the channel, but I also have a link to the deck on TCGplayer.com. So if you're interested in actually buying the pieces for the deck, or you just want to see the price range, I will have that linked separately in the description below. This video I'm going to go over one of the cooler commander options, I think, from Commander 2019, and that is Chainer Nightmare Adept. Four mana and Rakdos colors for a 3-2 legendary human minion with some pretty cool abilities here. You can discard a card and you may cast a creature card from your graveyard this turn. You can only do this once each turn, and whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste until your next turn. Both of these abilities are really cool when you consider this is really the first time we've seen the reaction animator strategy with Rakdos. Now of course you could take any Rakdos commander and technically throw in reanimator but to actually have an engine on a commander where you're discarding creatures you're probably going to want to also bring back. It's really useful and also giving those creatures haste can be incredibly underrated when you go and build this deck. So you're not just getting a Rakdos Marin, you're actually getting a bit of an ambush quality to this deck because those creatures have haste. And also the ability to recover. Red has some graveyard synergies but those are typically with artifacts. Being able to recover in red is such a big deal. Black never really had that problem, it was more about speed, so you can see how those two will kind of make up for the other's weakness, but overall just a pretty interesting looking commander, which is why I wanted to build a deck. But enough about Chainer, let's go over the actual deck here. You're gonna want to have graveyard synergies, this is just the way I built the deck, but a very powerful thing to put in here is Dredge. Dredge is whenever you would draw a card, you instead put however many cards the Dredge is for from the top of your library into your graveyard and then you just put the card into your hand. And of course the dredge cards have to be in your graveyard to begin with, but what we have here to play with is Golgari Thug and Stinkweed Imp. Really cool if you can just take five cards, put it into your graveyard, and then bring the Stinkweed Imp back to your hand. Also, awesome cards to just discard with Chainer, and you're going to see a trend with this deck. A lot of creatures are considered just throwaway creatures, and they're usually able to return to our hand. Now there is another good dredge card, Shenanigans, which is going to serve a similar purpose. The dredge isn't that good, but the fact that we can return it back to our hand is a big upside and destroying artifacts is useful in commander. This is basically a sorcery speed shatter that we can keep returning to our hand. Now I typically like to go over lands earlier in the video and we do have some pretty good ones. Gaia Reach Sanitarium and Rick's Mighty Dungeon Palace both gonna give us a discard outlet if we don't have Chainer out there which could be useful. Sometimes it's good to just discard because there are other things that could take advantage of discarding which I'll get into those in a little bit. And a favorite land of mine that I include in a lot of decks usually black decks that like sacrificing creatures high market exiling removal is such a pain to have to deal with high market is an underrated answer for things like swords to plowshares now going back to funneling cards into our graveyard it's going to be a big thing that we have to do and dredge while we wish we had more dredge cards to choose from we want to do dredge like things stitcher supplier enters the battlefield or dies put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard it's not like a stinkweed imp it's not going to get you those five but it's a cheap creature we can easily recast it with Chainer if we have to. Magus of the Wheel is basically Wheel of Fortune on a creature, and this is another theme here. We just want to discard a lot of cards. Dumping pretty much everybody's hands into their graveyards is good for you. Mind Slicer is one of those deadly creatures that people hate seeing because they don't want to discard their whole hand. This is not like Magus of the Wheel though, you don't get to draw those cards back. So in a deck where everybody has to discard their hands, you should have the clear advantage because you can just discard a card that you draw and then recast a creature from your graveyard. And that creature is going to have haste. We also have what is probably my favorite card in the whole deck is Sire of Insanity. At the beginning of each end step, each player discards his or her hand. So it's even better than Mind Slicer because this just happens each end step, making it harder for your opponents to gain any kind of card advantage. And who cares if you have to discard, it's really not that big of a deal for the deck that can easily bring creatures back from the graveyard. And since we're going to be discarding cards, we want additional advantage off of that that doesn't necessarily have to do with bringing creatures back from the graveyard. We can just dump creatures we don't have any intention on playing 
like Anger or Squee Goblin to Bob, because let's face it, you never want to cast these unless you absolutely need a blocker, and you're going to notice that with some creatures in the deck, that they're really just discard fodder. And a lot of that does synergize with a couple cards in here, Archfiend of Ifnir, whenever you cycle or discard another card, you're going to put a negative one, negative one counter on each creature your opponents control. So imagine pairing that up with a Sire of Insanity. So your opponents are going to have to lose their creatures in addition to losing a lot of cards in their hand, because that's going to be a ton of negative one, negative one counters. And the new Bone Miser fits in perfectly with the strategy. If you're not focused on the Sire of Insanity, you're going to be discarding cards with Chainer anyway. You might as well get some advantage if you're discarding a creature card, you're getting a 2-2 two -two zombie. Zombie. Just a very solid engine, and although it's not as powerful as something like Waste Knot, you're going to be doing the majority of the discarding, so it's perfect for that reason. Now we go on to some really good recursion cards, and these are creatures that are going to fit in well with the deck, because in addition to just being good in reanimation strategies, they're good because they also gain haste off a chainer. So if you use an Apprentice Necromancer or a Doomed Necromancer, these creatures are going to gain haste, so you can use their abilities right away, which is really useful if you don't want to pay the full mana cost of something like a Shouldered Whispering One, or even an Emrakul the Promised End, which I'm also including in the deck, because it's a really good creature that happens to focus on your graveyard for cost reduction. Just very solid ways to bring back those creatures we discard. And a card that fits in perfectly with this deck, because it's all about aggression, you can afford to be a little bit reckless and have your creatures die in combat. We also have Garn of the Blood Flame, and Flash is super useful because it's every turn. You only have that restriction on each turn, it's not just yours. So if you want to flash in Garna on your opponent's turn, after they board wipe, you can get those creatures back to your hand. And although I don't always like losing life, Phyrexian Delver is kind of like the Karmic Guide in black. Very useful to have something like this, especially if you can use Chainer to cast it, and then you get another creature back. It'll help you establish some kind of board presence. Now a fun trick here is using something like Sepulchral Primordial, because it's whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it doesn't specify whether they're your creatures, so taking those creatures from your opponents, not only could they be anything powerful that you force them to discard, but they're also going to gain haste. So let that sink in there, some very powerful options here, and it's all going to take advantage of what Chainer's able to give us. Now some very powerful creatures if you're able to recast them over and over again. We of course have Grey Merchant of Asphodel and Coca Show the Evening Star. These are just good creatures that, if they die, there's really no reason why you shouldn't just recast them from your graveyard with Chainer. Same thing with Combustible Gear Hulk and Noxious Gear Hulk. Solid value creatures that are good when they die, because then you can just bring them back, take advantage of their awesome ETBs all over again. And a card that I think is just super powerful that also was included in the pre-con, Flayer of the Hatebound. Whenever Flayer or another creature enters the battlefield from your graveyard, that creature deals damage equal to its power to any target. So that's any creature entering from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's like a Warstorm Surge just for this deck, which is made even more powerful by the fact that it has Undying. So you don't have to actually recast it as often with Chainer as you would for some other creatures in the deck. And Flash is something you should take advantage of because not just with Garna, there are some other creatures that have it. Dual Caster Mage is basically a Reverberate or a Fork on Creature ETB. Really sweet to have this. There's a lot of things that are awesome to copy, like Demonic Tutor. And although it is quite expensive, it's about a $30 card, Vidalcan Orrery is going to make this whole deck a lot quicker. Being able to take advantage of Chainer on your opponent's turns makes it a lot less frustrating if your opponents have board wipes. But aside from that, we are playing some very powerful Recursion. Reanimate is one of the best in the game. Stitch Together very underrated but efficient. Victimize is also a very good one. You can sacrifice a creature to bring two of them back to the battlefield tapped, which helps with your board presence. If you can bring more than one creature back from your graveyard a turn, you're going to take the pressure off of Chainer. And one of the big win cons, if you're able to pull it off, Living Death is just disgusting. You're the deck that's going to be dumping creatures into your graveyard non-stop, so while also forcing your opponents to sacrifice their creatures, your graveyard's probably going to be much bigger than whatever they have. And in this kind of deck, where again, we're just funneling everything into our graveyard, it's going to be well worth it. Oversold Cemetery is also pretty underrated. We can bring creatures back from our graveyard to our hand at the beginning of our upkeep if we have four or more creatures in there. Just a great thing to combo with Chainer, so we have more creatures to discard, so we're a lot less likely to empty our hand. And aside from that, if you need some good sack outlets, because hey, we're playing black, we don't want our opponents to exile anything. Altar of Dementia is a pretty good one because we can just mill ourselves. Ashnut's Altar is also a pretty good one because we could just 
get too colorless. It's one that everybody knows about. And similar to Living Death, we do have another Wincon, a Grimoire of the Dead. As far as artifacts go, this is a pretty good one, also allowing us to discard, but it is telegraphed, making it easier for your opponents to stop it. It's going to take a few turns before you can actually pull this off. But aside from that, we're just playing a good removal package. Rakdos Charm, Terminate, Bedevil, and Chaos Warp. You can't really go wrong here. Some of the best targeted removal you could have in the format. And if that doesn't work, just play Blasphemous Act. It's not living death, but you're going to nuke the board. So anyway, guys, that's going to do it for this video. Let me know what you think about Chainer. I wasn't the biggest fan of the original one. It just seemed like your generic reanimator strategy. But this time around, you do have the advantage of haste, which makes it easier to do things like Apprentice Necromancer. You're not waiting a while just to use an ability. Just a very efficient commander, and one that was desperately needed for red and black. You all have a wonderful day. Void here signing off. See you all next video.